Insatiable Art, and today I'm going to paint the two flamingos along with you. Um, you can order a pre-printed uh, canvas sheet from sociableart.com, and that's what I have right here, and this is the finished painting, and you want to have that alongside for reference. If you want to create this on a blank canvas, if you want to fast forward to the end of the video, I will show you how to sketch out these uh, flamingos yourself. Uh, but if you want to take the easier route, you can order this on sociableart.com and I'll just show you how to fill it in. Your paint kit should come with the paint colors that you need or you can purchase paint uh, on your own. And the colors that we're going to use today are um, a yellow ochre, a uh, brighter yellow, a magenta, um, orange, or if you don't have orange, you can mix red and white to get the orange, uh, a cobalt blue, and a cobalt green, and a little bit of black uh, for some areas on the beak and the eye. So, oh, and white, of course, gotta have white. And those are the colors we're going to use, and um, you can use uh, other any kind of acrylics that you have on hand as well. And we're going to start on this by painting in the background of the canvas and that's going to be a nice light pink you can do it all one shade of pink or you can do some variations in color and i'll show you the different ways that you can fill that in and you have you know whatever paintbrush came with your kit uh, but the the best thing to do when painting a large area is to use the largest area um, brush you can for uh, that area uh, because the bigger the brush, the less brush strokes that will show and the more uniform finish and coverage you'll get. So I created a lighter shade of pink by just mixing some of my magenta with some white. And then you want to make sure you mix enough to fill in the entire background so you don't run out halfway through and then have to remix the color and not get it the same exact shade. So I'm going to take my brush and start filling in the background. It doesn't really matter where you start. But I just wanted to show you there's a different, a couple different ways that you can do it. So, um, obviously there's some leaves in the background that I want to paint around. The one thing I want to caution you against doing is to outline everything first like this and then later go back and fill in between them because what happens is this dries these lines and when you go to fill in, you're still going to see those lines because they dried earlier at a faster rate. And for some reason, you will still be able to see them and it looks not very uniform. So if you're going to, you know, outline around with your brush, you want to make sure to uh, fill in around that area at the same time. Okay, and you're just going to work in one area at a time. You don't want to outline the entire thing. Oh, another thing that I forgot to mention is if you're using the paint at home canvas sheets, you might want to, there's a little border around it and you probably want to use a piece of masking tape to kind of secure that in place because while it's wet, when you're adding the paint to it, it has a tendency to want to kind of roll up a little bit. So while you're painting, you can put this masking tape on here and also It'll give you a nice uh, fine edge. You can just put that on the edges where you can see that there's no design. And then when you pull them off, you'll have a nice even edge. So anyway, I'm filling in around the outside here, avoiding the leaf areas with my brush. And if you want to have it one uniform shade, you can just continue in filling in the whole thing in that one shade of pink. But if you want to have some variations in color as you're filling in, you could take your brush and dip it in maybe some white paint and just add that right into your pink in some areas. Maybe you want the top to be lighter. So if you'll add it into the pink while it's still wet and just brush it in, it will just blend in really nicely. So you can see I've lightened up this top area and then I'll just keep working it in and then it can get darker as you go down if you want or you can do it all just one one solid shade of pink and also there's different ways of you know like you can do a very painterly style where you see a lot of the brush strokes and you use a lot of paint 
And that would be kind of like a Van Gogh kind of look where you see all these brush strokes in here and you see the movement. And if you're gonna do that, where you want to have apparent brush strokes and you're gonna use a lot of paint, then you just wanna make sure that you pay attention to the direction of your brush strokes. So if I'm gonna leave brush strokes on here, maybe I want them all to go in one direction or circle around the canvas or something like that. If you're going for a smooth finish, then the bigger brush you use the better because you'll have less brush strokes and also you can use you can do more than um, one layer of paint more than one coat of paint and that will always make it look more smooth so you just want to if you're going to do that mix more of the paint color than you would normally because you're going to do a second coat or you can do the second coat in a slightly different shade and that would be fine and be a nice layering look so I'm just going to take my time going around all of these and I'm going to speed up the video temporarily do a little time lapse um, so that you don't have to watch me just very slowly filling in the paint color amongst all these elements. So you can pause the video right now as you fill in around everything and when you restart it I'll have the background all filled in. dries a little bit darker than what it originally appeared like in your palette and if you feel like yours is too dark um, there's still time to change it you can do another coat and lighten it up because you don't want it so dark that the pink flamingos won't show up well against it so now is the time to make that change if you feel like you need to and also if you don't like the finish that you got if you think it's too uneven go ahead and put a second coat just to make it nice and smooth and even um, make sure that you have filled in every part of the background. You don't want to find out later when your paint is uh, dry in your palette that you have forgot to fill in some of the background and then you can't create a matching color. So just check and make sure you've got all the spaces between the little leaves and the areas down here by consulting the finished work of art to see uh, what areas need to be filled in. So now um, I'm going to start filling in the greenery in the background. And I'm gonna start with these uh, darker green leaves that you see here. And that, to make that color, I created um, a shade of green that is the cobalt green mixed with a little bit of blue. So if you wanna just take your brush, take some of that green and mix a little blue in with it to get a darker shade of green a blue green and then once you've got that mix you can start filling in those leaves got my blue green and I'm using that bigger brush again and you know if you start putting the color on the canvas and you're not thrilled with the shade you can always change it that's the wonderful thing about paint can paint over anything that you don't like. It's not a done deal. I have paintings that I painted a long time ago that I sometimes I'll pull one of them out and just paint right on top of it and change it quite a bit, make it a different style. They're never completely done until you decide they are. In. it's kind of difficult filling in around these legs you know and I would I would probably if it was you know just me doing this on my own I would probably just paint right over the legs and then just add them back in later but if you're worried about 
being able to get the legs just right and you want to paint around them, you can go ahead and do that. It just should get less brush strokes if you were to paint right through them. But if you end up with too many um, brushy looking areas, you can always go back and do that second coat, which is a great trick for getting it smooth and even. So I'm just gonna keep filling in around here and around this petal. And then I go back and I just kind of smooth out my brush strokes, kind of try and make them go in the same direction. If you end up with any big, um, you know, clops of paint, you can always dab it with a paper towel. Also, dabbing it with a paper towel will get you kind of an interesting texture too. And if you like that, you might want to do that throughout. Okay, so I've got that one, and then we have one more uh, dark green leaf, and that one is over here. And it's got a little point here. If you need to switch to your smaller skinny brush to get this point on here, you can do that. You never want to overload your brush with too much paint, unless you really want that kind of Van Gogh painterly look. Um, I like to use um, not a whole lot of paint so that I don't get big smears of um, paint and I don't want a 3D kind of look. So that's why I tend to not use very much. But on the other hand, you don't want to use so little that you keep on having the canvas show through. You can see the texture of the canvas showing through and little bits of white. You know, make sure there's no little bits of dots of white showing through where the bare canvas is apparent. And if that seems to be happening to you a lot, you're just someone who uses very little paint, then you might want to add a little bit of water into your paint because then it will be thinner and it will fill in the grooves in the canvas better. Now, if you're not having that problem at all, you don't need to worry about that. But if you keep finding that happening to you, just maybe water down your paint a little, make it looser and thinner and it'll feel a little bit better for you. Okay. So now that I have that filled in, again, if you wanna smooth out your brush strokes after you're done. Okay, now we have um, these two uh, fern kind of palm plants in the background. And I did them um, either Using this um, yellow okra, I could do it that color. Or if you wanted to add maybe a little orange to it, you could do that. Or you could even make them just a straight bright yellow. That would be interesting too and look good. So right now I'm just using the yellow ochre. And this paint, at least in my palette, is a little bit thicker than the other paints I've been using. And if you find it's too thick, you can always add just a little bit of water into your paint. Especially when you go to do something like um, the stems here, the stems are very thin and if you want them to come out really nice and thin, you may want to water that paint down a little so it flows a little bit better. And then make sure you don't overload your brush and make sure you flatten it out. So you load the brush with paint and then you flatten it, kind of pushing out some of that paint into your palette so that um, you can do a nice fine line. Also, when you're applying that brush to the canvas, you want to use a very light touch if you're trying to do a thin line. You want your bristles to just barely be touching the canvas. If you press down, the bristles will spread out and then it's very hard to get a fine line. I mean, there's, there's times when you want to press down and get your bristles to spread out to try and do a particular shape or whatnot, but to do a thin line, you want to use very little pressure and just keep the bristles nice and tight. Don't worry if you're filling in these leaves and you get some of this color onto your um, flamingo. I do that all the time. I almost do it on purpose because I don't want to stop the line of my brush. 
Um, if you get some on the flamingo, we'll just paint over it later when we fill in the pink of the flamingo. Okay, so I filled in that one and I'm gonna fill in this other one the same way. And then I'll fill in these um, green, other green leaves. And those other green leaves, I'm just pausing for a moment so I can let you go ahead to fill these in at your own pace. But I just wanted to tell you these other green leaves, I use the cobalt green, but I mix it with some yellow. So I'll get a nice, bright, slightly lighter green. And once I get that shade, I'm gonna show you what that looks like on the canvas. So here's that um, lighter, brighter green. This is the cobalt green mixed with the yellow. And I'm going to um, go ahead and put the video into a time-lapse mode so you can fill in these other elements at your pace. So um, I want you to fill in your other yellow ochre palm frond and then your um, bright, brighter, lighter two green leaves. And then I'll join you again to uh, paint in the flamingos. So have fun with that. And I like to start by filling in the white parts on the beaks and the whites of the eyes. So I'm using a skinnier brush to do that. And I'm just going to fill in those areas first. And there's a little bit of a line on the beak that's going to be black. And I just paint right over that because it's, it's too hard to, to go around that thin little line. So even though the canvas is white, you still need to paint in the white areas because you can certainly tell the difference between bare canvas and painted canvas if you look closely. The eye filled in and the beak. We'll worry about that black part in a minute. And now we're going to fill in the flamingos. So I created my flamingo color by combining some of the magenta with some of the orange and then adding a little bit of white to it. So I created two shades of that. I did magenta, orange, um, and white, and I created this lighter shade. And then I have the same combination of colors with less of the white added so that if you want to have two different shades, you can. I just like to do that. It makes it look a little more three-dimensional. So you can start out with your darker shade and know that these colors will always dry darker on the canvas and keep that in mind when you mix your color. And if it dries and you think it's too dark, you can always change it. You can paint right over it. So I'm filling in the flamingo and I am trying to pay attention to the way that the feathers would probably, the direction the feathers would grow when I'm using when I'm uh, using my brush strokes in the direction that the feathers would grow or at least if I don't fill it in that way I want to go back and kind of brush over that area in the correct direction out by doing this all in one shade here all the grooves in the canvas still wet i'm going to go in and dip into some of this lighter shade i created and add um, a little bit of a variation in color in there i think it'll be a little more interesting it has that lighter area in there and then i'm going to do the legs i think i might Add a little of this lighter color too on the legs. And this can be a little tricky. Again, make sure not to have too much paint on your brush and do that trick that I mentioned earlier where you flatten out the paintbrush on the palette to get the excess paint out of it. It's just a necessary step in order to get 
a nice fine line. You don't want to have your paintbrush overloaded. In these legs, keep in mind that if you accidentally go outside of the lines or your legs on your um, flamingo get to be too big, um, you can always go back to your other color, the green of the leaf, and fill in around that leg and just give it a little trim and make it look thinner. Okay, now I'm going up to do the neck. And what I'm going to do is use this darker shade along the side here. I'm going to do a section at a time. So I have this darker color here, and then I'm going to have the darker color on the other side of the neck as well. As soon as I get that filled in there, then go, while it's still wet, I'm going to the lighter shade. Notice that I don't really need to clean my brush between these shades unless I have a lot of paint on my brush and I then it would just take over. So I just put that lighter shade in between the two darker shades just to make it look a little more three-dimensional like a real living bird. And just to give it a little contrast too. Okay. In here, kind of adding the darker shade. And the reason I do it section by section is I don't want that to dry before I can put the lighter color in there. Got the darker color, and then I'm putting the lighter color in between and kind of blending it in there. And if you paint in there, it's just like gobbing up and making lines. You can always use your paper towel to kind of blot a little bit of it out. Here. around the eye and kind of mess up that eye again don't worry you can go back and reform that shape with your white paint so that looks pretty good and you can always go back when it dries and add some more of the light color to look like feathers on the body I think that would be a good idea. And I'm just gonna go ahead and do this other one here, starting with the darker shade of red on the head. I mean, that red, pink, kind of that flamingo pink, kind of a coral color that's made with the orange and pink magenta. Brighter colors, I mean, you can just do like a straight magenta, like a very bright pink color instead. I mean, I would say this coral color is more um, realistic to what they actually look like, but um, like a lot of those big plastic flamingos that you see for as yard art, they are a very bright pink, which would be more like the magenta or the magenta mixed with a little bit of white. Each flamingo, since there's two of them, you could do each one in a slightly different shade. Errors, you can always go back to the colors in the background to kind of fix that. Side and putting the light shade in the middle. Mostly the dark shade and then you put some of that light color on top. Don't worry about adding the legs, which is nice.
darker shade, you can go back to that lighter color. Add some streaks of that in to look like feathers. I go back and add some of that on this one too. To add our black on the beak and maybe some little veins in the in the leaves. Here I don't want. Black, we've got our skinny little brush. We're gonna do an eye. Add the black on the beak. your pinky finger to kind of steady your hand when you're doing fine work like this. That can help a lot. You have an eraser, it's called white paint, that you can use to correct errors. Kind of a thin line, it's best to do it quickly and confidently is what I always tell my students. Very quickly and confidently to do the little line on the beak. This one as well. And now I want to add the veins to the leaves. The bright, lighter green one, I can just use the straight cobalt green to do the vein. And it's just kind of, you can see it, it, on my canvas at least, you can see it showing through the paint. All our brush. lines on here that join in with the other and then on this one if you can't see it you just want to run a wavy line down the center of your leaf to begin with to in each of these little areas you want to have a vein that comes back to the center And then on the other leaves, the darker leaves, you want to use this yellow ochre. And you just see if it, if it doesn't look like it's showing up well, you could always add just a little bit of white to it. So I'm gonna do that to make it show up better. So this is it with just a little white added to the yellow ochre. And with these little skinny little brushes, you kind of have to reload them pretty often. center to the tip right there. The other thing left to do is to kind of go through, see if you need to touch up any areas or add a second coat of paint. And then you're going to want to sign your name and take credit for your work of art. So, let's see if I can show this. This is mine. And here's the original. And you can go to sociableart.com if you want to shop for other painted home kits for kids and adults and groups. And I'm going to show those of you who want to sketch this on your own canvas how to do that now. 
And for the rest of you, I appreciate if you would like the video if you liked it and subscribe just to find out when new videos are released. So if you're gonna draw this at home on your canvas, you can start by doing shapes for the bodies. I'm starting somewhere near the center of the canvas and I'm just gonna do a shape for the body of one of the flamingos, which is kind of a, kind of an egg shape almost. See, it's like an egg and that's one body and the other body is over here and it actually comes off the canvas. I wanna leave enough room for a leaf here, but I'll just do this one here and I'm doing the egg shape, but it goes off the canvas, okay? And then the neck of the flamingo actually starts down here at the bottom of this egg shape and it's a curve. So do kind of like a shallow S curve. See that, an S? And on this one, it starts down here. Do an S curve. Little S curves. And then on the at the um, end of that, you're gonna have put a circle. And here's a circle on this one. Then we're gonna fill in the rest of the neck. So we start on the body. And we start, this neck's gonna be a little bit thicker here. And then we'll just do this paralleling the other line. Come to this circle shape and then we'll kind of smooth into the circle with our line. And then as we follow this line around that circular head, we're gonna keep kind of going like this with a line and it's gonna to come to a point and then come back and join there. Okay, so let's do this one. We start out down here at the base of the body and we're gonna do this curved line, follow along with the other curved line and get to the head. Then we smooth this line into the circular head and continue down into a curved beak. Into this egg shape, you could put a little feathers like that. And maybe it, just make it a little more defined like this. Okay, so there's your tail and then your body. Same thing over here, you're gonna go up into the tail. We cut off a little of that uh, egg shape. And then we're gonna add some leaves. So I'll start with this one down here that's gonna cover up part of your flamingo. So I'll start with the, the point of it somewhere here and I'm gonna do a wavy line. Okay, that's one sided leaf. And I'm gonna do this wavy line here. And I'm gonna go over some of the flamingo. So that's one of them. This one, this next one's gonna go behind this flamingo. So I'll do a line here. And then I'll start here on the body and I'm gonna do a wavy line. And this is gonna end up covered up by another leaf, but let's just go ahead and finish that one. You can erase the part you don't want. Then we have this bright green leaf here. And I'll do a wavy line like that. And I'll go back from here, a wavy line that ends over here. And then for this leaf, I'll start somewhere near the corner. This is gonna go up like this, curve back, come out, curve back into a point. Different shape to this leaf. Um, you might wanna use your eraser to get rid of the lines that you don't want. The one thing you need to add is uh, legs here. So we're gonna start somewhere here on the body and we go into a straight leg. And then the other leg is tucked mostly beneath the body and comes out here at this angle and the foot hooks onto the other leg. So I add an eye. Uh, black part at the end of the beak that you're gonna add that little triangle shape. And then we just need to add this other kind of leaf. So I start out with the stem of it, which is a curved line like this, and it ends in a leaf, okay? The other one over here, come out here, ends in a leaf. And then all you have to do is add the other leaves on there. This one. There you have it. 
So thanks for painting and sketching along with me, and I hope you'll continue to paint on your own. Thanks a lot. This is Arianne of Sociable Art, signing out.